<clears throat> Alex, you there? Ok, alors... Euh... Ok, perfect. Hey Alex. Hello Paul. How are you? Ok. <coughs> ok. I can, can you, <coughs> I cannot hear you properly. There's something wrong with the sound. Yes, now I can hear you. Uh, just, okay. Sorry for that. Okay. okay, hello. Good, okay, good. So, uh, <laughs> welcome everyone. And uh, Alexandre, good to have you with us. From, um, I yeah, guess, yeah. Is, the, is the dining room at uh, Domaine Ponceau. Absolutely, um, we are in the dining room. Yeah, so normally what we do is we'll ask you to say, uh, you know, 10, 15 minutes about the history uh, of the domain. Give me some, uh, yes. some background and some story so that, uh, you know, the, the guests can, uh, you know, hear from, from you. Yes, for sure. Uh, yeah, so Domain, Domain Ponceau was, uh, was established in, uh, in 1872, so uh, I say nearly 150 years ago uh, by, uh, by William Ponceau, and uh, it's, uh, it's still a, a family-run company, so uh, I say now the fourth and the, and the fifth generation is, uh, is running and managing Domain Ponceau. Um, so Domain Ponceau uh, was established in, uh, in Maurice and Denis, and, uh, and the founder, William Ponceau, uh, purchased some, some parcel, uh, two, two main parcel in Moest and Denis in 1872. So, uh, one parcel was, um, was the Clos des Monts Luisans, uh, which is still one, uh, one of our historic parcel. And, uh, an other parcel purchased in 1872 was, um, was some, uh, some parcel of Clos de la Roche. So, of course, Clos de la Roche is, uh, obviously the flagship of the main Ponceau and it's, it's one of the two wine produced since, uh, since 1870, 1872. Um, about the history. So, of course, after William's, uh, I'll say the, the nephew of, uh, of William continues the story. So, Hippolyte Ponceau. And, uh, and after Hippolyte, the third generation was Jean-Marie Ponceau. So, Jean-Marie Ponceau is, is the father of, uh, of the actual, uh, manager, Rosemary Ponceau. And before Rosemary, the, the brother of Rosemary, of course, Laurent Ponceau was very famous because, uh, uh, he confounds, um, I say the, the, um, I say the people who make some, some fake bottle, uh, Rudy Kurinawa. And, uh, and now, uh, since 2017, the domain is managed by Rosemary Ponceau. It's still owned by the, by the family, by the, by the sisters of Rosemary and Rosemary Ponceau. And, uh, and personally, so, um, I joined the domain in 2017 when Rosemary Ponceau started to manage uh, the domain after, after Laurent Ponceau. Um, now, the domain Ponceau is still producing, is still famous for, for Claude de la Roche, of course, but we are, we are producing other wines. 
Uh, so mostly red wines because we are located in a, in a Côte de Nuit. So we are, we are producing some Bourgogne, some Maurice Saint Denis village, Cuvée des Grives, and we will test some Cuvée des Grives today. Uh, we also produce some Premier Curettes, Cuvée des Alouettes. We test us, uh, one of, uh, one of these bottles today, today. And, uh, and we also produce some, uh, some Grand Cru from Côte de Bonne and a Côte de Nuit. So some Coton, we taste a Coton today. We produce some Coton Bresson, some Clovujo, some Charme Chambertin, Chapelle Chambertin, and, uh, and a lot of Grand Cru from, uh, from Côte de Nuit. But the, obviously the, the most famous Grand Cru from Domaine, also of course, is, is a Clon Uh, I know. Any, any question, Paulo, about, uh, about the main yeah, more, more let's information? Yeah, let go back to the history a little bit. You know, in the, in the last five yeah. generations, um, did they yes. all bottle their own wine? Or uh, did the first or second or third generation sell a lot uh, in thought, bulk? So, no, the, the, I think the, the bottle estate starts with the, with the second generation, with Hippolyte Ponso. So the... The, the bottle estate started in, uh, during the, during the thirties in the last, uh, century. So probably first vintage bottle at the estate was 1930 or 1932. I, 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 I'm not exactly sure about, uh, about the beginning of the story for, uh, for the bottle estate. Uh, but definitely Domain Ponzo was probably one, uh, one of the first domain to, uh, to bottle uh, at the estate in, uh, in Burgundy at this time in, uh, I say in, uh, 19, in 1930. Maybe just uh, except of course, except the negotiation, but uh, at least uh, maybe just a uh, fifteen or twenty domains were bottling directly at the at the estate. So uh, domain Ponso was uh, one of the first to uh, to bottle, bottle at the estate, and uh, at the same time uh, we uh, we start to export the wines uh, overseas. So first uh, first bottle export in uh, in US, for example was in 1934, so just after the end of Prohibition. And uh, at the same time, we, uh, we export some, some bottles to Italy, to, uh, to England, uh, Germany. So we, are, we have a long, uh, long, long story uh, uh, with exportation. And of course, um, each uh, generation uh, was developing uh, the, the sales overseas. So, First bottle to, uh, I say to Asia was probably in Japan in the early, uh, 1980s. And of course in Hong Kong with, uh, with Paolo and Haltaya. I was end of the 90s, Paolo, uh, early, 2001 early 2000, and no. Early 2000s. Yeah, well, early 2000s. So yeah, so no, it's, it's a collaboration for, for more than 20 years. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, I think, it's typical of uh, of the main ponceau. Sometimes it's a bit hard to get some bottle from the main ponceau in uh, in France uh, because more than eighty percent of the production, probably eighty five percent of the production, is is uh, is sold overseas so in forty different countries now. That's that's uh, that amazes me because you know you go to uh, some restaurants in France. You, you rarely see yes. a, a Domaine Ponceau, but then you see it everywhere else, you know, from Japan to Hong Kong to, you know, Singapore. Yeah. And then, of course, in the U.S. is extremely strong. Why, yes. why do you think, uh, you know, the, 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 they started doing that in the 30s? I mean, was it a difficult market in France? Yeah, so, so just uh, just just to, to understand the situation uh, in the thirties in France, uh, I say the wine market for for fine wine was very hard. Uh, that was the reason you uh, you see in uh, in the same time in the thirties you uh, you see the creation of uh, of the AOC, so of denomination of origin, and uh, and the creation of uh, of some um, company to uh, to promote the wine like a Chevalier du Tastevin and all this. Uh, of this kind of promotion about uh, Burgundy wines or fine wine in general in France, uh, because at this time uh, the major market for for wine production was uh, was low uh, low quality wine just uh, just to drink uh, daily and, and that's it. So so the market for the fine wines was uh, quite hard. So uh, some some people uh, because uh, because the sale was difficult and the negotiation uh, pay a lower price for, for the fine wine. Some people decide to, to bottle at the estate and try to sell the wine by, by themselves. So it's what Sponso did at, uh, at this time. So Hippolyte, 
uh, did it. And second reason, because the main Ponceau do that, because uh, Hippolyte Ponceau and, uh, and his brother, uh, Henry Ponceau, um, they were, uh, okay, one producer and, uh, and one grower and, uh, and a vigneron. But in the same time, uh, there were some, uh, some diplomats. Some, they, they, they get a lot of connection in, uh, in different countries because they were diplomats. So they get connection in, uh, in Europe, in US. And uh, it helped a lot to, uh, to develop the, uh, the sale overseas. Mm, okay. So now you say it's still about 80% export. Sorry, Paolo, I now, don't hear you now. Can you hear me now? Uh, it's very low. Okay. Uh, Wait a second. No, I'm, I'm asking whether, so it's, it's still 80% export. Hello? Yeah, you're back. Ah, it's better. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, there was something wrong with my, uh, with my, tele with, with my phone, with my mobile. Sorry for that. Please. No, I'm, I'm just saying it's now 80, it's still 80% export. Yeah, no, it's still 80% export, uh, 80, 85% export. Yes, very strong for, for exportation. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So why don't, uh, well, thanks for that introduction. Uh, I, I think we should move on to, to the wine so that people can uh, share some of these bottles. Uh, tell me about yes. the, the Saint Romain. I mean, it's not the, uh, uh, it's not a major area, uh, uh, appellation. Uh, uh, so what? Give us a little bit of history. Why is there a Saint Romain yeah. of all the appellations you can pick, or maybe it was Laurent's okay. idea. <laughs> yeah, it's so Saint Romain is uh, there's there's an historical reason for 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 the production of Saint Romain. So. Uh, so just uh, just again, so it's absolutely, it's, it's a quite confidential appellation. Uh, it's a uh, it's a quite new release for for the main sponsor because first vintage for Saint Roma uh, to the main sponsor was uh, 2011, and uh, and just the reason we uh, we start to uh, to produce some Saint Roma, it was a uh, historical reason because because this is a village of uh, of the origin of the family of the main of uh, of Ponceau. so. Um, William Ponceau, uh, of course, purchased, a, purchased an estate at some vineyard in, uh, in Maurice Saint Denis, but historically he was from, uh, he was from, uh, um, from the village of, of Saint Romain. So he born and he grew in, uh, in Saint Romain. So it's just, it's just a remember to, uh, to, uh, to the origin of, uh, of the family. And, um, and probably the second reason we, uh, the main Ponceau and Laurent decide to produce some Saint Romain in, uh, in 2011 was, because at this time, the main Ponceau was already producing uh, a, a Grand Cru white, Coton Charlemagne, and, uh, and some, uh, and some Montraché. And, uh, we also produced for a long time some Premier Cru white, uh, I say the famous Maurice Saint Denis Premier Cru, Claude de Montluisan. But we, we didn't produce any, any village white. So it was, it was a good opportunity to, uh, to, uh, to, to introduce I would say uh, a village white white wine in, uh, in the in the Ponce wine east. That's uh, that's probably the two reason to uh, to decide to produce some Saint Romain. Okay, and seventeen, yeah. uh, a, a very nice uh, white vintage. Tell us a little bit about very, this very... Uh, seventeen in Saint Romain. Was it as nice in Saint Romain as other places? It's nice in other places. Um, you see, seventeen. Uh, was a very nice vintage for for white, and I would say uh, 17 is a very good and a great vintage for some places uh, on reds too, and especially for for us in uh, in Maurice and Denis. Uh, and probably the reason was seven, why 17 was very good in uh, in in Maurice and Denis uh, or to the main so It's because we we get we are naturally some. Uh, some low yields, I say, controlled yields in uh, in in 17, and the reason was because in 16, if you if you remember the vintage of 16, we will taste some 16 after. Uh, in 16, um, there is a big frost 
in uh, in Burgundy, and a uh, and a major part of the of the vineyard was affected and destroyed by uh, by the frost in '16, yeah. uh, except in a few places. And uh, and Maurice and Denis was uh, was one of these places without a uh, big frost effect on a on a vineyard. So finally, in '16, we get a normal production, and uh, '17, the vines. Uh, didn't overproduce grapes to make a compensation uh, of the 16. So finally, 17, we get a normal pollution. In many places, probably in Burgundy, uh, six, 17 uh, was overcrops production. But for, for us in Moy, we have a normal pollution. And finally, 17 have a beautiful concentration, a uh, lot of lengths, and it's a beautiful wine with a nice potential for, for aging. So we get, I would say, the freshness of the, of the vintage, which balance, I would say, the power of uh, of the concentration coming from uh, from these low yields from uh, from 17. So it's, it's a great vintage for for white, definitely. I think everybody is uh, is okay with uh, with that for for burgundy white. But for the red, uh, for some places and especially for for us in Maurice, and I, it's a very nice vintage too. So um, it's both nice vintage for white and for red. And it was your first vintage, is that right? Absolutely, it's my first vintage in uh, to the main person. So yes, mm -hmm. it's maybe maybe this is one of the reasons because uh, why I, I I like especially seventeen. Maybe it's because my first vintage too. So <laughs> yes, good. <laughs> but to be to, to be to, to to be honest, now uh, after four vintages in uh, in uh, in Burgundy and four vintages especially in uh, to the main person, sorry, um, I would say. 17 was a was a very easy vintage to uh, to uh, to produce uh, perfect balance in terms of high alcohol and acidity. Uh, every everything arrived on time. We harvest start to harvest in um, mid September uh, for for the first yeah the first grapes of uh, of Maurice and Denis or Jevre Chambertin. We uh, we start to harvest on the on the on the 19th. Uh, 19th of September, so it's very uh, classic vintage uh, with a nice ripeness, uh, good acidity, not too high temperature, uh, good summer times, uh, not uh, not too warm like uh, 18 or, or 19. Mm. So it was good. 18 was, I would say, 18 is probably more more powerful if you compare to uh, to 17, and 18 is I know is coming for uh, is coming probably in Hong Kong next year. Uh, but 18 was a powerful vintage, a great vintage probably to, to age and to drink uh, after 10 or, or 20 years. But people don't know uh, how 18 was uh, complicated to, uh, to, to produce. Mm -hmm. uh, big pressure uh, on the rot during, uh, during the growing season in the vineyards. Uh, bird break arrived quite late in 18. Finally, everything started to grow very fast and very quickly. So it was very common. 17 was definitely much much easy easier to uh, to to produce. So uh, I, I like 17 for for some reason. It's very good and great vintage, easy to make to produce. It's a it's definitely great vintage. Yes. And and even uh, now, I mean, the village is drinking uh, very nicely. I mean, it's really beginning to, to open yeah. up. Yeah. I I don't think of it closed yeah. down. I think it probably remained the same uh, since bottling, right? I, I I I I agree. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, as uh, the village like uh, like uh, Maurice and Denis Cuvillegri for the red or, or Saint Roma on the, on the white, they are they are both very uh, very easy to drink to drink now, and they uh, and they probably keep open for for the coming years. Um, maybe maybe for for Cloloche? we uh, we could see uh, something to close down in in the future. But for definitely for for the village like Saint Romain or for or for Cuvée des Grives, the next one, uh, they are, they are very enjoyable right now and they probably uh, stay like this for uh, for a couple of years. Yeah. yeah. What what vintage are you uh, serving at, at Domaine Ponceau in terms of the Saint Romain? Are you serving normally the latest one, or you also have some uh, older stock to to serve? Yeah, we uh, we we sometimes we have some oldest. Uh, I, I I didn't open some uh, some Saint Roma, some old vintages of Saint Roma recently, but uh, uh, in the last month, uh, fifteen was very good to uh, to drink. Uh, I think it was uh, showing very well, very expressive. Uh, it's a really beautiful vintage to uh, to enjoy right now. You know, Saint Roma uh, 
definitely don't have potential to maybe to hedge uh, for 20 years, like uh, like a Coton Charlemagne or more a Premier Cru, more Louisan. But uh, you can easily keep it for for five, six, maybe up to 10 years, depend uh, depend on the vintage. Uh, maybe 15 because was a was a warm vintage is a uh, is quite enjoyable right now so you can uh, you can appreciate uh see the richness and uh and all the aroma of yellow fruit from uh from the 15th mm. uh 17 is very charming and very expressive now uh with a touch of citrus of uh, of a uh, uh, mix of citrus of aroma uh touch of uh, of yellow fruit um but yes i think 15 is nice uh 11 and 12 are, are quite good too but uh if i recommend something to drink now from uh, saroma the main console is 15 at this time okay good yeah good 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 it's nice i'll, I'll drink this uh with my dinner later no, okay, no problem. <laughs> I, I will probably do the same. I will keep the bottle for me tonight and uh, drinking for my uh, for my aperitif. Yes. Okay, wow. so let's uh, let's move to the first red out of the three. Mm -hmm. We have um, three reds to taste, and again, uh, it's a 2017. You mentioned that uh, it's a lovely vintage for white and also for red. So. Yeah. Tell us about the Maurice Saint Denis um, situation in in seventeen. You were not affected by frost in sixteen, uh, so you were safe. No. And seventeen was also we a very, uh, very, very good vintage for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So sixteen, we were not affected by uh, by the frost on sixteen. So. Maybe we, we will talk a little, little bit more about 16 with, uh, with the next wine. But uh, yeah, 16, we were not affected by frost, so good, good production 16. And, uh, and finally, in, uh, in 17, uh, I would say the vines, I say produce just the, the right quantity, quantity of, uh, of grapes. So, so finally, we get some uh, some beautiful uh, fruit with a nice concentration, beautiful color, uh, good acidity because uh, because the vintage was not too uh, too hot and too uh, and too uh, and too dry, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and finally, uh, so the wine is quite balanced, uh, quite expressive, uh, with a beautiful fruit, a mix of red and uh, and a black fruit. And uh, just about about this wine, about the Maurice Saint Denis uh, Cuvée des Grives. So it's a it's a Maurice Saint Denis village. Cuvée des Grives is just a, it's just a cuvée name. Uh, it's not a, it's not a climat, it's not a lieu, it's not a location. But it's a single vineyard. Actually, it's coming from only one uh, one climat, one lieu. It's coming from Montluisan. So it's coming from the same place as the white from the main Ponceau. And uh, maybe let me. Uh, give you more information about uh, about the Lyodi, about the climate Montluisan, because Montluisan is a uh, is a bit special for for Burgundy. It's one of the few uh, clima, one of the few Lyodi in Burgundy, who can produce uh, three different uh, appellations from the same location. So bottom part of uh, of Montluisan, bottom part of the slope of Montluisan, because Montluisan is a very sloppy uh, climate. Uh, so the lower part of the of the slope is producing Grand Cru Claude de la Roche. In the middle part of the um, in the middle part of uh, of the slope, so it's it's exactly what you can see uh, between the bottle of the two bottles of red on uh, on your on your photo on your picture, uh, Paolo. Yeah. Uh, so just just between the between the Moray village and the Moray Premier Cru, you can see the Premier Cru area. So the yellow part. The yellow part of the Premier Cru is a Pinot Noir, so it's producing Cuvée des Alouettes. Mm. And the green part, the, the vines are still uh, green in, uh, in, in the fall time. Uh, this, is a, this is a white uh, area with a, with a very old vines of Aligoté. And I don't know if you see, uh, just on the left, just under the forest, you can see a square more yellow, just uh, between the Saint Romain bottle and, uh, and the Moray village. This is where do the Moray village Cuvée des Griffes come from. So it's coming from the from the uh, from the upper part of the of the slope. This uh, this part of Morison is classified as a Moray Saint Denis village. So it's 
slightly different of a Moray village coming from the lower part of, uh, of, the, of the village of Moray. Suddenly. Most of the village in Burgundy are located near to the main road. You see, the altitude is about 250 meters, 260 meters, something like this. But this location, this parcel of, uh, of Moray Saint Denis, Montvison, so QA de Grip, is located at altitude is 350 meters. So this is 100 meters difference. And we are just under the forest. And, uh, and so we get some shadow in, uh, in the early, uh, I say in the late afternoon in summertime. So we keep the freshness. So we always get a very nice freshness in, uh, in, uh, in this wine. And, uh, and, uh, other important point is, uh, at this, uh, in this location, the soil is very poor. We get just maybe, uh, 30 or 40 centimeters of soil. And we are straight on the rock. And a very, uh, and very, uh, strong, uh, and hard, uh, limestone, which is called, uh, calcaire de Comblanchien. And it give, it give to, uh, to the wine, uh, a very nice minority. So it's very interesting for, for it's completely different to, uh, to the Moray village located in the lower part of, uh, of the vineyard. It's, uh, it's very, very different. How, how big is the whole Lyodie again? The total area? Total area of, uh, of Montluison? Yes. Uh, Montluison, so total of Montluison, including Grand Cru, Premier Cru, and village area, it's about 15.5 hectares. 15. And the parcel, 5. the parcel, of, uh, yeah, 15.5. And, uh, I don't know, maybe, uh, I would say maybe, uh, 25 percent is maybe classified as Grand Cru. 25 or one third, and, uh, and probably 50% is, uh, classified as a premier crew, and, uh, and just the rest, about 25, but maybe just 20% is just a village. It's, it's very small, uh, very small, uh, percentage is, uh, is, uh, is village from, uh, from Montluisan. It's, it's only the, the small, uh, the small piece of land on the, on the top, just under the forest. Okay. So this, uh, it's actually uh, uh, quite expressive as well. I mean, it's not very shut down. You think it's uh, your style or is it uh, the vintage? Because normally, sometimes it's... when you taste uh, a, a, a young Ponceau wine, they can be quite tight. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sometimes, it can be close, but normally with a, I would say with a, with a, with a village wine like a Saint Romain or like a Maurice Saint Denis Cuvée de Grive, or if you test, uh, Bourgogne Cuvée de Pinson, this, I say these wines, uh, they are made to, uh, I say to be enjoyable, I say quite early and, uh, and to be, uh, to be, uh, to be appreciated, uh, and to be drink, uh, I say quite quickly and, uh, it's not because they are open right now. You cannot age, so you can uh, you can uh, you can appreciate now, and you can age for for uh, 10, uh, 10 or ten or fifteen years. It's not it's not, it's not a problem. But for 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 those wine, for for the village wine, we try to to um to uh to keep these wines uh more drinkable earlier. Uh, with probably with the next one with a uh, with a more recently premier cru alouette, we will start to uh, to taste some wine to uh, to age. So um, I would say, yeah, village cuvée de Grive or Saint Romain or Bourgogne cuvée de Pinson, they are uh, enjoyable and drinkable quite early. Uh, for the other wine of uh, of the main Ponceau, and probably your your right, Paolo. Uh, most of Ponceau wines uh, need to be aged to be uh, to be enjoyable because. Because sixty percent, seventy percent of the production uh, of the main ponceau is Grand Cru, so mm -hmm. Grand Cru are made to be uh, to be drink after ten or fifteen or twenty years, or sometimes thirty years, like uh, like uh, nineteen ninety or nineteen eighty. Um, so that's uh, probably the reason because why the main ponceau need time to uh, to to be uh, to be drink and taste is because a major part of the production is is Grand Cru. And, uh, and we consider Grand Cru, uh, doesn't make sense for us to, to, to produce some Grand Cru if, uh, if it's to, uh, to be drink after, after three or, or four years. Uh, if you want to, to enjoy a red wine from the main Ponceau, 
uh right now you can uh, you can open some some more village or or, or some or some bougain and, uh, and and keep your uh, keep your ground crew for for i don't know after after 10 15 or, or 20 years you know recently i had the the famous uh, magnum of 2003 claude la roche it's finally yes. it's finally uh, becoming uh, ready um yeah it's it's not It's quite it's nice. Start, it's start to be uh, to to be, to be ready ready now, uh, and uh, Kroner O3 from Magnum, uh, maybe Chapelle O3 is uh, is is quite ready now. Uh, before before Kroner, I will I will personally I uh, I taste a Chapelle O3 and it was very delicious. Mm -hmm. uh, Kroner Roche just start to be uh, to be uh, to be drinking about. Right. Okay. Yeah. So. Um... I mean, it's it's a good problem to have when you have uh, you know 60 or more uh, percentage of wine made uh, uh, in Grand Cru, and uh, with very few quantities or f you know less quantity in the Premier Cru and especially the Village. I mean, normally it's the other way around. So that's Absolutely. why that's why when people think about Ponceau, uh, as you well know, people always think about the Grand Cru wines rather than this wine rather than the Saint Romain and you almost don't see the Bourgogne because I mean a lot of uh, people including us you know we, we we try to save a few bottles for ourselves to drink <laughs> of course <laughs> it's it's I say Bourgogne Bourgogne Cuvée du Passon Maurice Saint Denis Village Cuvée des Grives are very confidential QV, very confidential production, so uh, they are very limited. Uh, just, just, to give, just to give you an idea, and I think 17 was probably one of the biggest uh, vintage in terms of volume for, for QV de Grive. But it's, uh, it's about, uh, we are talking about what? Um, four, 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 four thousand bottles for QV de for all around the world. And uh, it was 17, probably one of, one of the biggest vintage uh, in uh, in 19 and uh, in in yeah in 2019 production for Cuvée des Grives uh, would be uh, uh, 1,500 bottles. Which vintage? For all around the world. Which vintage? Yeah, it's five. 19. So uh, really? 19, 2019. Wow. Yeah, we get just five bars of uh, of Cuvée des Grives, so it's uh, it's almost nothing. Wow. So it's, uh, it's hard to get some. Uh, and, uh, unfortunately, Rosemary Ponceau can, can, cannot join us uh, today for, for the tasting. But uh, if, she, uh, if she was uh, here with, uh, with us, she would, say, she would say, you see, to the main Ponceau, if you want to get one bottle of Maurice and Denis Cuvée de Grive, you need to buy six bottles of Claude Laroche. <laughs> It's uh, like some, 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 some other producers, they will say, you have to, to buy six bottles of Village to, uh, to get one bottle of Grand Cru, but for, for, from the main point, so you need to buy six bottles of Claude Laroche to get one bottle of Maurice and Denis Cuvée de Grive. That's a good problem to have. That's a good problem, I know, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's move to the next one. Yeah. The 16 Alouettes. Yes. Okay, 16, very special vintage. Uh, sad sad uh, for some uh, area, some appellation, like your neighbor in Chambon-Mousigny. But um, for, for, you were the, the lucky one in Moray. We, we were very lucky, absolutely. Uh, it was a very sad vintage for uh, for a lot of producers, uh, and actually we, we, we were affected too uh, by, by the frost in '16 uh, in a vineyard of uh, of Jovray Chambertin. We we uh, we didn't produce any any Chambertin in '16. Uh, we, uh, we we were a very very small production for all the wine from uh, from the Côte de Beaune in '16 because of, because of frost. So uh, yeah, it was a very sad vintage, uh, but fortunately for for us, uh, I would say all the vineyard of uh, of Maurice Saint Denis and uh, I say especially the vineyard located on uh, on the slopes were 
were completely safe of uh, of frost in uh, in 16 so we are uh, we had a very nice uh very nice vintage in 16 actually mm-hmm. and uh, and it's I would say it's very sad for 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 Burgundy because uh, potentially at the beginning 16 was a was a was a great vintage uh, with a with a good uh, I say with a good quantity of grapes on uh, on the vines and uh, and finally was a uh, a quite late vintage with a with a perfect ripeness uh, in uh, in September so. It's it's funny. It's a quite late vintage. Huh? We uh, we harvest quite late. Uh, I say for us normally we harvest. I would say mid September and second half of September. But uh, 16 was very late. We uh, domain also start to harvest in uh, in October in October 8th, 9th, 11th. Uh, Moray Saint Denis premier cru cuvée des Alouettes uh was harvested in uh in october 11th wow so it's uh it's not so common now if you if you see uh for for the last vintages for 18 19 2020 we uh, we harvest now more in uh early september sometime in august like uh, this year in this year we harvest in august uh or in 19 we uh, we harvest mid september so to harvest in october is not so common now in, in the past 20 years ago uh, during the 80s or, or the 90s, it was very common to harvest uh, end of September, early October, but not now. So, 16 was a very special vintage for that, and uh, and finally it was a it was a great vintage because September was a was just a perfect with a very uh, good temperature during the day and some very cool nights. So, perfect balance between. A uh, warm day and cool night to get a perfect ripeness of the tannin and the and the polyphenol. So the the color on the 16s uh, are very nice. The tannin very elegant with a beautiful fruit. So it's a, it's, it's a wonderful vintage, and we are very we are very lucky to get a, a a good production in terms of volume for 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 this vintage. Yes. But um, tell me about the picking dates. I understand that of course the the harvests are moving earlier. But what about at Domaine Ponceau? Mm. Are you still practicing what uh, Laurent did, which is to harvest quite late? Or are you comparing to your, your neighbors and, and other producers? Or are you moving it forward as well? We, we, are, we are still harvesting, I would say, uh, late. And uh, we are we we are not uh, we are not yet the the, the first uh, domain to pick to uh, to the village, not yet, and probably not uh, not for the for the coming years. Uh, so we 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 try we keep the philosophy to uh, to get the perfect ripeness of the of the fruit. We we don't want to uh, to decide the uh, the picking date. Uh, because the weather forecast uh, say uh, risk of rain uh, next week or something like this, so we we always take the risk. We uh, we uh, I say the, the the fruit and the ripeness decide. So if we have to wait, we uh, we wait. Uh, I say the two the two previous one we test seventeen uh, were were picked uh, in mid September. But you have to know in seventeen most of the producer in Burgundy. Uh, start to harvest end of August, uh, first week of September. So we start to harvest two weeks after most of the producer in uh, in the uh, in the area. So we keep we, we keep the same philosophy. Of course, sometimes it's not possible. Like uh, eighteen, uh, the first idea in eighteen was to harvest. Uh, probably mid September, but finally the summer was so hot and so dry, we have to anticipate. And finally, we harvest in the first week of uh, of September, which was quite late compared to uh, to other producer. Mm. Uh, some some producer from Maurice and Denis they harvest two weeks before us, so we are still in the I would say in the in the, the last part. producer. To, to, yeah, in the late. Uh, late producer to harvest in uh, in Moët Saint Denis. Um, what we do now for for two three years, uh, it's maybe to uh, to uh, compare to uh, to the to the Laurent Ponceau period. We are we are we are um, we are harvesting in different times. So uh, sometimes we can uh, uh, start to pick some uh, some parcels because they are perfectly ripe and ready to pick, and we stop. For two, three days, or sometimes one week, 
and we restart uh, for for a couple of days, two, three, four days uh, for Clolaroche, for example, and for and for the More Premier Cru, and we stop again uh, for maybe another five, six days to finish to pick with a with a white if it's not right at the same time. So we uh, we we prefer to work with a with a small team, uh, local people. We can uh, we can be uh, called uh, today for for tomorrow to uh, to be ready to uh, to pick the the fruit when they are perfectly uh, perfectly ripe. Okay, good. Yeah. So um, thanks for that. So Alouette, tell us a little bit more about this QB. Hmm. So this QV. Alouette is um it's only one vineyard again it's coming from the always the same the same UD, the same clima Montluison. Uh it just uh it just located at the limit of Claude La Roche. So um, you cannot see the difference between Premier Cru and a Grand Cru Claude La Roche. You, uh, you you have one row is Grand Cru and the next one is Premier Cru Alouette. So it's very very close. There's a lot of similitude with um with the Claude La Roche. Uh, sometimes great vintage. It can be considered. Uh, you can compare with some uh, some some Claude La Roche. It's uh, it's quite rich and powerful, uh, with a nice balance, and you can age for for ten or twenty years without uh, without problem. Um, Alouette, um, you have the concentration of a, of a Grand Cru in these wines. So maybe I see the difference between the Premier Cru and the Grand Cru Claude La Roche is Alouette. You get more. Uh, same concentration, same quantity of tannin, but maybe just missing uh, the elegance and uh, and the balance of uh, of the Grand Cru. But uh, this is definitely a great wine to uh, to uh, to age and uh, and keep for for ten or fifteen or fifteen years. People always uh, want to know. I mean, for the young vines of Claude La Roche, or for those yes. that you didn't <laughs> select for Claude La Roche, does it go into here? Absolutely, yeah. It's uh, it was a uh, it was uh, it was a case for for so some vintages in the, in the nineties when uh, when the men replant some uh, some Claude Roche or so some some young vines of Claude Roche go in a uh, in a uh, in Alouette. Uh, if we consider some uh, sometimes some vintages, uh, if one or two bars coming from a uh, from certain spot in the vineyard of Claude Roche are not. Uh, good enough to uh, to make some Crelaroche, we can declassify as a as a Moray Premier Cru. So you uh, you get some in uh, in the nineties. Uh, I don't know for uh, for the first decade of uh, of uh, of twenty first century. Uh, in sixteen, definitely it's only Premier Cru. There is no Crelaroche uh, going uh, going inside, uh, but. It can be sometimes uh, declassified Grand Cru Crelaroche inside, but it depends on the vintage. It's not necessary uh, every year. Okay. And how big yes. is the production of this wine? Uh, it's one hectare, so on a good year, it can be um, five 5,000 bottles. Okay. It's again, it's quite small. Yeah, it's quite small production again. It's not, uh, it's not, it's not too big, so... Uh, Five thousand bottles, six thousand bottles on a, on a really, really good yes. Okay, good to know. Yeah. All right. So uh, moving on to the last wine, which is uh, which brings us to the south, Cocton. Yes, Cocton from Côte de Bonne. From Côte de Bonne. So, yes. Um, one second. So Cocton, uh, what, what's the history? Why why was this parcel introduced to uh, Domaine Ponceau? I think Domaine Ponceau was a uh, uh, was looking to uh, to extend his uh, his experience on a on a wine making with some uh, with some new appellation in uh, doing doing the. The 2000, so they 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 try to to they they, they want to uh, to to experiment to make more more wines and a, a new appellation in uh, in the early 2000s, and 
I think their idea was to uh, to try to make some some wine from uh, from the Côte de Beaune, like uh, like a Coton Charlemagne and a, and a Coton. So it's the same the same philosophy. Um, try to share experience and experiment to make some uh, some red wines from uh, from different terroir, different uh, different clima. And so the, the idea was to to uh, yeah to to, to make some uh, some some Coton. Uh, now, Curtin, we are making some Curtin for more than 10 years, 12 years. And, uh, it's always interesting to, uh, to try to make, to vinify some, uh, some grapes coming from a, from a different area. So, I think Curtin from the main Ponceau maybe is, uh, is more, uh, more similar. We try to make it like, uh, like a Grand Cru from, uh, from Côte de Nuit. So, uh, it's maybe slightly different to, uh, to a Corton made in Corton. Uh, sometimes Corton made in Corton, they can be a bit, uh, more, uh, more tannic, more, more, more powerful, more massive, sometimes maybe a little bit more, more rustic. Uh, here to the main point, so we try to, uh, to make some Corton with a little bit more, uh, maybe more, more elegant, more, 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 more feminine. And, uh, just uh, just to uh, to put the uh, to put the the signature points on a, on a, on a Côte de Beaune red wines. So, how many different parcels um, is this coming from? How many different parcels? So, uh, how many different Lieu D? Or... Yeah, it's coming from uh, three different parcels, uh, three uh, three different Lieu D. Uh, as in the major one, the, the, the main parcel is. Uh, is a, is a clima which is called Les Polans. It represents normally, uh, of course, depending to the vintage and, uh, and, uh, and the yields of the different parcels, but it's, uh, it represents about 60% of, uh, of the, of the, of the blend. I don't like to say blend. It's making Bordeaux, Bordeaux, but, but yeah, 60% of, uh, <laughs> of the blend is, uh, is Les Polans. Uh, 20% is coming from Claude du Roi and 20% is coming from Perrier. And, uh, and maybe because, uh, because, uh, 60% of, uh, of the Coton Cuvée du Bourdon is coming from Les Polans. Uh, you know, uh, you know, Paolo, uh, Les Polans is, uh, is in the lower part of the, of the Grand Cru and, uh, only, uh, uh, half part of the, of the Clima is classified as Grand Cru Coton. The rest is just a Premier Cru. So we know from Les Polans, we don't have the same potential as, uh, as from uh, Lieu dit Claude du Roi or, or Perrier. So maybe for this reason too, we try to make something more more elegant, more 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 approachable. So we don't have the potential to make something very very massive and powerful. So don't try to over extract uh, the the fruit, and uh, we don't want to take the risk to uh, to make something uh, dry with ash tannin on uh, on the, on the finish, so we 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 uh, we vinify uh, cotton uh, slightly differently to uh, to Claude La Roche. Uh, lower temperature, so if we if we if we go up to 32 degrees uh, in terms of temperature of fermentation for Claude La Roche, we try to limit around 30 degrees maximum 30 degrees for for cotton, and we do maybe a little bit less uh, pigeage or extraction. Uh, we prefer to work with more infusion for, for cotton. Uh, with with, with, just with to, this uh, and the uh, Bresson, you make it differently. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, in Bresson, the, the fruit here, the fruit from Bresson are, are, are different. You, you, you get more, more roundness, more volume, more concentration naturally in Bresson every year. So you can, uh, you, you can make, you, you can do a little bit more extraction from, uh, from Bresson and you, and you get naturally more roundness coming from Bresson compared to, uh, to Cuvée du Boudin. Okay. Good to know. Okay. So, um, the, the, the vintage was different also, 2014. What was that like? 14, 14 is, um, is, uh, is probably more, more similar to, um, to 17, but with maybe a little bit less concentration compared to 17. So it's, a, it's another classic vintage for, for Burgundy. Um, harvest more or less in the same time, uh, as 17th, so second half of September. Uh, 
I think we uh, the main the main ponceau harvest cotton cuvée du Boudon. Uh, it was around um, September 11th or 12th. Uh, we always harvest cotton one week before before Côte de Nuit, except for for exceptional vintages. But uh, most of the time we uh, we harvest one week before. So probably was harvested in uh, in September 11th or, or 12th. And um, yeah, 14 is a is a very fruity, very uh, very, very red fruit uh, vintage. Uh, maybe not a huge concentration if you compare to uh, to vintages like a 15 or or 16. But um, very nice on the fruit. It was a uh, uh, quite expressive uh, when we uh, when we bottled the wine with a nice expression of uh, real cherries, a griot, or, or or different red fruit like uh, red currant or all this uh, of kind of aroma. Um, it was a very nice uh, acidity and a very nice freshness. So it's it's a it's a typical Burgundian vintage. Uh, people say uh, yeah, it's typical to uh, to Burgundy with a with a small red fruit on the nose, uh, very nice acidity, not too much tannin, not too much concentration. Was a uh, 14 was a uh, was a perfect uh, traditional vintage for for Burgundy. And would you recommend people to drink it now? And if they drink it now. Would you recommend them to open it a little bit early and let it breathe? Yeah, you can. You, you can. You can. You, you can breathe the bottle, uh, especially for for the ground. It's uh, it's uh, it's still good to uh, to breathe uh, the the wine the bottle maybe one uh, one hour before to uh, to enjoy and drink and taste the wine. Um, 14. If you are, if you like the wine on the on the on the freshness on the on the red fruit, I think they uh, they are very good to uh, to open now. Uh, but probably in the future, in, uh, in the 10 years, they will turn to, uh, to this uh, forestry aroma, mushrooms aroma, typical of evolution for, uh, for, for Pinot Noirs. Uh, so it depends. If you're, if you're, if you're looking for, for very beautiful red fruit, fresh fruit, Uh, open it right now. Enjoy, enjoy the 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 red currant, the strawberry, the raspberry, and uh, and the red cherries, and uh, enjoy the I say the drinkability, the freshness of the wine. And uh, if you are if you if you are passionate and if you want to uh, to enjoy uh, a nice uh, Pinot Noir with uh, with all the I would say the all the spectral. Of uh, of uh, old Pinot with uh, with mushroom with fresh aroma, keep the wine for keep this wine for another 10 years. It will be fantastic, probably in uh, in another 10 years. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I think it's a good uh, good range to show, even though we didn't show the famous Clos La Roche. Uh, Uh, we want to make it, uh, uh, you know, slightly different because you're too well known for your Claude La Roche, and everybody knows your Claude La Roche, but not many people knows about these uh, other wines. Maybe the Alouette, yeah. but the Cocton and the and the Village wines, people don't drink it enough. So I thought it's interesting to to show it today, and uh, no, but Alexandre, thank you for your for your time. And thank you for sharing no. uh, all these comments and 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 history about the the domain. No, th thank you, uh, thank you to you, Paolo. Thank you to um, to arrange uh, the tasting. It was uh, it was great to uh, talk about uh, about those wines. And uh, and, I, and I agree with you. Uh, domain Ponceau is uh, is producing between 15 and and 12 different wines, and uh, and. Most of the people now uh, from the main pont, so just uh, Claude La Roche or maybe one or two other Grand Cru, and, and that's it. But we are we are producing uh, a, a, a large range of uh, of other wines, and it was great to uh, to get the opportunity to talk about about this more confidential production, like uh, like a Saint Romain, like uh, like a Cuvée de Grive, or or even like a, like the Coton. So it was it was nice to to promote. Uh, I say so. No well-known wine from the main Ponceau, uh, if I compare compare with uh, with Claude Laroche. So thank you for for that. Thank you for your uh, for your job and your hard job in uh, in Hong Kong. Oh, my pleasure. Well,
What about the situation in Hong Kong for you? You are you are you are reopening restaurant and bar now? Or yeah, they, you are still locked down. More or less reopen. While uh, I understand yeah. France has just have a new uh, lockdown, so uh, people yeah, are going down, out. Yeah. And and in fact, I'll be going out uh, to see some friends with my bottles after after these, so that they can taste the Domaine Ponceau. Um, but no, I mean yeah. Hong Kong is now uh, entering hopefully a, a more uh, gentle phase with uh, fewer cases of COVID. So we'll see. But you know, as as the weather cools down, maybe in December, January, there will be a new wave because yeah. there's no way we have the vaccine. Uh, yeah. So you know, people have to live with it, and it really depends on the government because sometimes the government. Uh, uh, are very cautious, and and they you know they will you know close down as soon as they see any problem. So we'll we'll, yes. we'll see. But please send my regards okay. to uh, uh, Rosemary and everyone at the at the domain, Thank and you. have a great uh, end of the year, and we'll be in touch. You too. Okay. And just. Thank you. A, a, a good time for for the end of the years. Uh, keep safe and uh, have a nice evening with uh, with your friend and your and your bottle of Ponceau. Okay, thank you, Alexandre. Bye bye. Bye, bye Paolo.